Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tom. Glad to be here. Well, we had a question last time that I thought was right in Mike's wheelhouse, and we're not going to restrict our discussion to watchwinders, but I know he has some passionate feelings about them. Uh, Mike, when is it appropriate to use a watchwinder? The only time that I personally like watchwinders is if you have a complex calendar. Anything else, it's, it's better for the watches to wind down, let the, let the power come down off that mainspring, let the watch relax. It's not bad to let the watch actually stop, completely stop. Go ahead, pick the watch up a week later, wind it, and put it back on your wrist. You don't have to keep the watch at full wind all the time. It's not going to help it. Um, it and from, from a watchmaking aspect, what I've seen is it actually puts more wear and tear on the automatic components to keep the watch at full power. So basically, when a watch winder should be used sparingly for a complex calendar or a watch with some sort of complicated ancillary function, something like an equation of time, yes. equation of mm -hmm. sunset, sunrise would be an example there. Also, when it's one mainspring barrel and when the watch is not excessively complex, because there are complex calendars, but then there are watches that are simply complicated, and those should be not kept on a wind. Exactly, exactly. And like I said, the most of the time, the problems that we see in service is the watch, is, a watch will live on a winder for three years, four years, where people have a lot of watches in their collection, and they, put them, they don't put them through a rotation. They'll pull the watch out, and they'll wonder why they have no power reserve left on them. And the reason is because, especially on a 7750, you actually have wheels that break. And they've, they've addressed that over the last couple of years, and they've made a lot of improvements, but there's still problems with, uh, you know, with the 7750-based movement, which is primarily you know, the primary movement that's out there yeah, you know, it's, being it's, used by everybody. And it's places you don't expect. Those who may not have had a lot of experience with the movements inside the case of their watch would be surprised that there are many variants of the 7750 chronograph with the yeah. chronograph components removed used as a three-hand time watch. Exactly. So just because it's not a chronograph doesn't mean it isn't a value 7750 and they don't like to run full-time on a winder. Now it's also important to note that um, in terms of running a watch on a winder, you've got two components to the watch. You've got the winding system and then you've got the part that tells time. Now a watch is designed to tell time 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It just keeps running between services. But a winding system pretty much assumes it's going to be, and it's designed this way, that it's going to be in action eight to ten hours a day and then sit overnight. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it can't operate. I mean, exactly. Huh. What, what happens is it doesn't, like you said, it doesn't give the, the mainspring and everything else the time to relax. And then when you take the watch off at night, you let the watch sit as you're sleeping, that watch winds down. It's going to wind down. When you pick it up, you shouldn't have to wind it again. You shouldn't have to put a preload on it, but your actual, your movement throughout the day should wind that watch back up. It's the watches don't want to sit the whole time at full power.